is a really safe to own a utility right now, even a very well-run utility, given that the Fed is expected to raise interest rates maybe multiple times this year, including later this month. And that will make these high-yielding bond market alternative stocks a lot less attractive. Take Avangrid, AGR, the company that was created back in December of 2015 when UIL Holdings merged with Aberdola, that was the oil, was the old United Illuminating, um, to create, uh, Aberdola USA, to create an electric and gas utility spanning 25 states, though it's mostly focused on New York and New England, with a big renewable energy portfolio, including a lot of wind power exposure. we got to ask about that. Avangrid stock is up more than 10% year-to-date, an impressive move, in part because the company reported a solid quarter a couple weeks ago. While Avangrid's revenue came in a bit light, it still posted a three-cent earnings beat off a 64-cent basis, slightly stronger than expected earnings guidance for 2017. Here's the issue, though. Avangrid sports a bountiful 4% yield, and that yield will get less attractive as interest rates go higher. Plus, you have to be a little concerned about the renewable energy business, given we got a new president who's about as pro-fossil fuel as you can get. So let's take a closer look with James Torgerson. He is the CEO of Avangrid to get a better sense of how his company's doing and where it is headed. Mr. Torgerson, welcome back to Bad Money. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Have a seat. Thank you. All right. Well, first, before we get into what how utilities trade and what it means i've got a release here that's very exciting february 9 2017 amazon wind farm u.s east powered by oven grid renewables tell me how this deal came about and what it means well they came about a couple of years ago actually working with amazon they wanted to have wind power green energy supply their data farm in uh down in the Virginia area. So we cited a wind farm in North Carolina. It's now producing 208 megawatts every day you know, on time. So it's worked out great for us. Well, how do you know that a wind farm works? Well, you put it up and the, they start spinning. But it's very interesting on how those wind works. Right. I always thought you know, that they would turn the blades. Actually, you angle it so the wind is right on the nose. And it's all aerodynamics today. So you can see it working, then it's generating electricity, and you see the electricity flowing. Did anyone have any problems with putting, putting it where we are? Any sighting issues? People saying, no, I don't want that in our area? We had a little bit. The Department of Defense actually has an over-the-horizon radar in Virginia. <laughs> okay. We worked with them ahead of time, sighted it. We actually cut back on the number of wind turbines we were actually going to utilize yeah. to work with them. And then the farmers there are very happy with it. They love the fact that they have the wind turbines on their property. They get a lease payment from right, it. Right. So it works out for And what do you do with the excess power when it's really windy? When it goes into the grid. It goes to the grid. Yeah, okay. and then other ones get turned down. Let's say other plants that can be turned down and not okay. run at the same right. time. Now, uh, J.P. Morgan, which doesn't like your stock, is been wrong right now, says, the difficulty of achieving meaningful earnings growth from renewables in a highly competitive environment and little margin for error in the utility business make achieving current targets by 2020 a challenge. Uh, uh, renewables seem pretty, pretty like a good way to make power these days. It is, and all of the ones we're building today have long-term contracts associated right? with it. You're not At, just, you're not winging it. No, we're not winging it, and we don't just sell it into the marketplace. Right. Anything we build now is going to have a long-term contract with it. Now, um, I do have to say, uh, I have to ask, what is the effect of the Trump administration's lack of interest in renewables so far on your business? It really hasn't impacted us. And when you look at it, the um, states are really the ones with renewable right. portfolio right. standards. And they're the ones that are demanding more renewables for each of their states. So that's how we're working. it. And we work state by state and company by company now. Now, you do have a very aggressive five-year plan. Uh, and it, it looks like, you, you, will that be a lot of infilling in your area? Because you might be the low-cost producer. We are a low-cost producer, right. and we have a lot of wind farms. We have like, uh, we have a pipeline of about almost 6,000 megawatts wow. of ones we can develop. 2,100 of them are around the country, okay. so we have good spots where we can develop it today. Well, then, uh, just to go back to the top, then, uh, th with this portfolio, the idea that you can perhaps raise the dividend, I know the board has to agree with that, year if year if year, it puts it as a nice uh, counterpoint to whatever the bonds might give you. Absolutely, and we are looking at 8 to 10% earnings growth right now for the next four or five That's years. Very, very big for utility companies. I know, but in 6.5 to 8.5%, 65 to 8.5% are things we already have secured. You know, we have rate cases that have been resolved, and we've got the investments already locked in. We have wind farms that are being developed with contracts already. Right. So 65 to the 85 is already there pretty much. We have to manage the business right. well. But then we have some other things going on that are going to get us to that 8 to 10. So getting to the point of the dividend, 
we've worked with it. We want a payout ratio to be 65 to right, 75 percent, right. but we've also said that we plan on raising the dividend in 2018. Well, I got to tell you, this the board's got to prove it. But of course, but this is a very strong story, and for uh, for younger people who know that wind power is going to inherit the earth, look at this one. This is the kind of stock that maybe you should own for the long term. That's James Torgerson, he's the CEO of Avin Grid. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.